On March 7th, 2010, the 82nd Academy Awards took place in Los Angeles, California. As you can imagine, on that night, there was a lot of star power present at the Kodak Theater in Hollywood. Steve Martin and Alec Baldwin hosted the show. In the audience, and up for Best Actor, we had some really well-dressed guys. George Clooney was nominated for Up in the Air, Morgan Freeman for Invictus, Jeremy Renner for The Hurt Locker, Colin Firth in the incredibly stylish movie A Single Man, and the eventual winner, Jeff Bridges for Crazy Heart. And let's not forget the guys up for Best Supporting Actor, Stanley Tucci. Christopher Plummer, Woody Harrelson, Matt Damon, and the stylish winner from Austria, Christoph Waltz, for playing Colonel Hans Landa in Inglorious Bastards, which on a side note is one of my favorite acting performances of all time. Now, all the men I just mentioned understood the dress code. Unfortunately, that night, John Travolta did not get the memo. Now, don't get me wrong. I like John Travolta. I mean, I even enjoyed his performance in that year's movie, From Paris with Love. But trying to pull off this combination, on the red carpet? Oh my, yeah, there are just so many things that are wrong here. Now, to be clear, you can dress up jeans, but there are certain rules you want to follow to get it right. And the first rule is to understand the limits of denim. Now, denim, by definition, is a sturdy cotton warp face textile in which the weft passes under two or more warp threads. It's a twill weave producing a diagonal ribbing. And it's this particular weave from cotton that distinguishes it from other materials. Now, denim was originally produced in Europe. Versions of it can be found back into the 8th century. And for over a thousand years, this was a rough wearing type of fabric that was worn by the peasants. However, it was in the New World, the West Coast, United States in particular, where Levi Strauss made it a legend. For the next hundred years, denim would serve as a cheap, durable, uniform material that the working class would continue you to wear the hell out of. It was the fabric of the man doing the dirty work, and it wasn't really till the 1960s that it started to infiltrate youth culture and even by the 1970s appear on automobile upholstery. I'm sharing all this with you because a thousand years of association is tough for our society to shake. And the association is that denim is for the working class, denim is casual clothing. Now, this is important because when most people get dressed up, they want to look like their upper class. And clothing was historically used to differentiate people's status in society. So, because of its history, denim has limits as to how far up you can dress it. When black tie is expected, like the Academy Awards, I think wearing denim just is out of place. That being said, in today's modern workplace, where a suit isn't required and a man wants to look good and feel comfortable and get good use out of his denim, I think there are tons of ways for you to dress up your denim. Now, when you're dressing up your denim, the first thing you're going to look at is what are you going to match it with? One of the easiest upgrade moves is to throw out the t-shirt and wear a polo shirt. The collar right there, that structure collar is going to better frame the face. And if you stick with a solid color, one that you already wear quite a bit, maybe it's white, maybe it's black, maybe it's navy, all of a sudden you're going to have a look that's a bit more dressed up. Another option is just to go for a long sleeve button down. Now, what you're looking for here is a material with a really nice drape. Again, the collar is going to frame the face. That placket right there in the front is going to provide a line that allows the eyes to go up and down. Now, as if the weather's a little bit cooler outside, consider layering with a sweater. All of these shirts I just talked about can work with a quarter zip sweater, can work with a crew neck sweater, or even a v-neck sweater. And as you can see right here, I am pulling off the combination in case you're wondering. All the shirts, all the sweaters that you've seen so far in this video are brought to you by today's sponsor, Collars & Co. Now, gents, I've been talking about Collars & Co for a couple years now because I love what these guys did. They're entrepreneurs that came into an industry and said, you know what? Most guys don't like their dress shirts because they're uncomfortable, because they're too tight. They want to be able to wear a shirt that, yeah, it feels comfortable like a polo, but has a collar that's more like a dress shirt collar. And this is exactly what Collars & Co did with their dress collar polo. They took the classic polo and they made it better. They put on a dress shirt collar that is incredibly comfortable, that stays structured, that's got a nice strong placket, four buttons in the front. When you put this thing on, what I love about it is that you can layer it. You can throw a sports jacket on top. You can throw a sweater on top. You can wear it by itself, but that collar is going to remain strong. It's going to keep looking good all day. And gents, when you go over to their website, not only are you going to see they got tons of options when it comes to the different patterns, the different colors, but depending on the type of collar you want, if you want a semi-spread, if you want an English spread, if you want a button-down collar, if you want a cutaway collar, at Collars & Co, they've got you covered. And gents, if you start with the polo, don't stop there. They've got a great selection of sweaters and pullovers to include outerwear such as vests, jackets, and coats. And they've got pants. And gents, I'm a business guy, but I'm not the only one that saw value in Collars & Co. Mark Cuban invested a million dollars in this company when they were on Shark Tank. 
In fact, he wears their shirts whenever he's doing interviews. I'm proud to work with them and I love their clothing. Here I am at the baptism of my daughter Marina and I am wearing a Collars & Co shirt. It was hot. It was humid. I just feel that these are a great tool to have in your wardrobe when you want to look good and you don't want to think about it. So, gents, check out Collars & Co. I'm putting the link in the description of today's video with the best deal you're going to find on the web. Use that link. Go over to collarsandco.com slash RMRS. Now, getting back to the specific rules of dressing up jeans. Let's bring up that image of John Travolta again. So, if he was wearing black denim, you know what? I don't even think a lot of people would have noticed. And that takes me to the next general rule. If you are going to dress up denim, go with something dark in color. It can be a dark indigo, it could be black, but you want to go with a solid color that from a distance looks like it could be maybe a pair of dress pants. Now, up close, people are going to be able to see the texture, they're going to be able to see the fit, they will be able to tell that it's denim. But when you've got something that fits, it gives you a more monochromatic look, especially if you're dressing up the top with a jacket. I do feel that sticking with dark denim is most men's best bet. That being said, I know a lot of you guys have successfully pulled off wearing light colored denim and dressing it up and there are ways to do that. First up, the wash needs to be consistent. It should be a solid light color, not one that has a gradient as we see with the John Travolta photo. This right here, he's just got a wash that is going to not only date him, but it screams casual. I think a steady light blue, light gray, or even the spring, hot summer, if you've got the color for it and you've got the clothing that works with it, maybe going with the pastel. Yeah, and a semi-casual hot weather event maybe you could pull this off. But in general, darker colors are easier to dress up because darker colors in general are associated with more formal wear. So, that's why colors like burgundy or dark green are easier for a lot of guys to pull off when it comes to dressing up their denim. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you're going to know this next rule and that is know the name of your tailor. Make sure your jeans fit. Now, when you're out looking to purchase jeans, there are going to be all types of different fits. They're going to be loose, baggy fits. They're going to be skinny fits. In general, you want to go with a more tapered fit or you want to go with a straight fit. Depending on your body type, if you're going to be a little bit heavier, I would go with straight. It's going to balance up your top area. If you are a thinner guy, if you're in good shape, I think a tapered pair of jeans will work well, especially when you're dressing them up and you're wearing with the right type of shoes, which we'll get into here in a few minutes. Now, when it comes to fit, I think the best thing you can do is buy something off the rack that fits you well. However, there are going to be times that the jeans are just too long. Maybe they need to be brought in. Maybe you spend a lot of time in the gym. You've got those thunder thighs because you squat a lot. So, you're going to have to bring in the waist. And these are easy fixes that a seamstress or even you can learn how to do and make happen. And when you've got pants that fit you properly and jeans that don't have all that excess material because, yeah, you don't want to be that guy dragging that excess material on the back. Gents, I can tell you this good fit is going to go a long way in you being able to dress up that denim. Next up, let's talk about quality. So, you're going to see all different types of selvage. You're going to see Japanese selvage. You're going to see American. You're going to see different washes. You're going to see all types of builds. You're going to see different types. Prices are all over the place. Do I think that if you know, hey, I'm going to spend 200 bucks on a pair of jeans, you're going to get good quality? all the time? No, there's a range. What I would say is go into a store, find something that you really like, get that fit first, but look for the best deal. Unfortunately, great deals move all over the place. I do find with the higher end specialty stores, you pretty much know you're going to get something that is going to last, is built well. Is it going to fall apart? Oftentimes, they come with better warranties. On the other hand, some of the denim you buy at box stores with off brands that most people have never heard of, you could actually get some decent deals. Personally, what I like to do if I have the denim on hand is I turn it inside out and I look at the stitching. I look at the construction. Did they finish the ends? Do we have loose threads all over the place? Higher quality work doesn't always indicate that they used a great material, but usually if they're going to spend that much time on the workmanship, they will try to use the best materials they can afford. Now, if you do have the option to choose where the material is coming from, I really like Japanese fabrics, but those are going to be some of the hardest, most expensive ones to find. European fabrics usually seem to have a little bit longer yards and a little bit more durable in general. And again, this is Western Europe than what I see over in the United States. That being said, the United States probably has the best pricing. Seriously, if you're selective in what you're looking for, you take advantage of a few deals, I think for 50 to 75 bucks, you can get denim that easily will work great with a sports jacket, blazer, and will be able to stand up to a number of washes. And that takes me to the next thing you got to be really careful of. You bought that great looking pair of dark denim. It fits you well and you wore it with that sports jacket, you felt like a million bucks. And then you get home and you throw it in the wash and it's, there's something different about it. It fits a little bit tighter, but that eventually stretches out. No, the color, it's 
just a little bit lighter. What happened? So, denim, as we discussed earlier, is a cotton fabric that is dyed. And that dye, depending on the quality of the dye that was used by the manufacturer, it can last for 100 washes. Sometimes, if it's cheaper, it will only last like 10 to 15 washes. And when I say last, I mean you start to notice a difference. And unfortunately, manufacturers don't share the quality of their dyes or how it's done. So, what I do is I'm just very selective on the denim that I wear when I'm dressing up. I'm very selective about when I throw it into the wash. And even then, I know guys that will only wash in cold water with a very mild detergent because they realize that you don't need to, I mean, let's just face it, most washing machines are overkill for what they're doing. When it comes to throwing your jeans in the dryer, if you want them to last, don't do it. Just let them hang dry. The problem with dryers, look in that lint catcher. You know, where is that coming from? It's coming from the clothing. Nothing kills clothing faster than a dryer. And yes, I know it's convenient, but it is just taking a life out of that clothing and it will kill it sooner than the washing. Now, I alluded to it, but I want to talk specifically about blazers, sports jackets, odd coats, and suit jackets. Now, the word odd jacket pretty much covers any jacket that doesn't come with a pair of matching trousers. Now, if you've got a suit that you never wear and you really like the, hey, that blue jacket, it works with the jeans, I think that you can do this. Just to understand that you are going to, if you damage the jacket, you're going to lose the whole suit. Again, if you've got, if you don't wear this suit, if you've got a backup, that's great. If it's your only suit, I would keep the suit and I would never separate it. Yeah, it's just a rule I have. I think every man needs to have a suit and so don't separate it because that suit is probably more expensive, then you're looking to grab a sports jacket or blazer. But if you don't have the time, because thrifting, that can take years to find what you're looking for. No, I would say just go into the best menswear store in your area, wear a nice pair of dark denim, wear that collared shirt, and go try on a variety of different sports jackets. What I love about the sports jacket is it is going to be more casual than a blazer jacket. I think it's more versatile in today's day and age, especially for a lot of you guys that need something to be able to wear on the weekends, be able to wear on Friday. Yeah, you wear suits maybe Monday through Thursday, but you want to be able to dress it down quite a bit on Fridays or the weekends. Or maybe you live in an area that's ultra casual like me, and I, it's really hard for me to wear my suits. But every single day, I'm pretty much wearing denim. I wear collared shirts. And what I love about my sports jacket collection and my blazer is that I can just go grab any of those and it works because I keep my shirts pretty simple and I can throw one of those on and I can dress up if my daughters are having an event at the ballet studio or if they're ice skating, I'm going to be talking with other parents. I want to be able to represent my family. I want to be able to represent myself and that's what I love about that look. Now, blazers are a step up from a sports jacket, mostly because I'm talking about the solid color, not regatta blazers. We're talking about the solid color blue navy blazer, sometimes with a nautical feel to it. So, I mean, you have the gold buttons, the silver buttons, or even the mother of pearl button. I think a blazer with jeans can look really sharp and you can go with a variety of different colors. If you're wearing an outfit that you need to wear a type, again, you want to be able to wear the jeans, I think the blazer is actually going to be a great combination. Yes, you can wear this with certain sports jackets that are going to be a little bit more simpler in the design, maybe a darker solid color. But the blazer, because of its dark colored fabric, just feels dressier and when you're wearing it with that dark colored denim, kind of gives the suit-like vibe. Again, it's not going to ever be confused with a suit. But yeah, white shirt with a regimental striped tie with that blazer with dark denim, I, you could pull that combination off. And speaking of those jackets, let's talk about accessories. So, pocket squares, I think, look great, especially if you're not wearing a necktie because the pocket square, it shows that, hey, I understand I could have worn a necktie, but I decided to put my accessory here and have a little bit of fun with it. Most guys don't pull off a pocket square. What I recommend is going with a simple presidential fold with a white linen. And if you don't like it, just simply tuck it down, hide it, or take it out and put it in your back pocket. But most likely, you'll forget about it until you look at the pictures later and you'll be like, man, I look good. Now, when it comes to jewelry, when it comes to necklaces, when it comes to rings, in general, I like to keep it simple. There isn't really a set rule if you're going to be, you know, with jeans to dress them up when it comes to jewelry. Although I do like to be able to wear nicer classic pieces. I'm a big fan of dive watches, as many of you guys know. The watch I'm wearing right here, the Show Show by Grand Seiko, it's probably on the edge of being, you know, kind of flashy, but I really like this watch. And I do feel wearing a watch, it's a little bit dressier, sends the signal that, hey, I'm dressing this denim up. So, yeah, you want to probably avoid ultra casual watches like a G-Shock or something like that. Now, if you're going to be dressing up the denim, go ahead and dress up the accessories as well. And of course, your overall grooming. Have a fresh haircut. Make sure that you're shaved properly. Make sure your hair is in place. Use product if that's what you normally do, but you want to make sure your grooming is on point because, yes, you can dress up all nice, but if your grooming looks like crap, remember it's a chain and a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So, the weakest link right here, the most casual link is going to be the denim. So, you want everything around there to be stronger. 
Does that make sense? And I can't believe I even have to say this, but yeah, don't wear white socks. I mean, why are you wearing, I mean, white socks or athletic socks, that's fine if you're out working out, but wear dark colored socks. Now, I know some of you guys are saying, well, what about light colored denim? In that case, go with something that matches the shoes. And speaking of shoes, guys, I've got you covered with this video right here, how to wear dress shoes with denim. I got a whole video on this and I talk about, you know, why you shouldn't go with black shoes, why you should variations of brown. And I also talk about, I think, a color that is even better than both of those. So guys, check out this video, boom, right here,